Hello everyone and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is July 23rd, 2015. My name is Lynn Marquedon and I'm your host. Welcome! Fibercast is all about us getting together and working on something fiber related for an hour because it's amazing what we can get done together in 60 minutes. So thanks for joining me. As you can see, I have started this a day early, so it's, it's actually Thursday instead of Friday. And the reason for that is that I'm on my way to La Jolla tomorrow morning, so I'll be in California tomorrow night. And I just wanted to work on my disappearing pinwheel, and I figured why not turn on the Fibercast and record tonight. So hi everyone who might be out there now. I have lots to catch up on. Tonight I'm going to be working on the disappearing pinwheel patch. Jenny Doan and the Missouri Star Quilt Company have given us approval to do it together, to play with it. What a refreshing experience I've had working with them. So thank you very much to the Missouri Star Quilt Company for a wonderful design and ease of doing business. Highly recommend them. This block, as you know, takes two, well, you can do it in any kind. There, there are different ways to do it. But Jenny's way is so simple and easy because she takes two um, layer cakes of 10 inch squares of 42 each and with that you make your quilt top. I've done a little bit differently of course because I'm kind of cheap although I am enjoying working with brand new fabrics that are already cut. I used one charm pack that mom and I picked up at um, the Heath Hen last week on the vineyard and then uh, we picked out some gray color to go with it and I cut out 10 inch squares. And I'm only using 30 of each so I may do something different from the border that, that from what Jenny does or I may just not put a border on. We'll see how it goes. But so far so good. So I, you can see what we've got on the back wall here so far. It's so interesting to me to see which prints kind of stick out with this gray and which ones just actually just recede into the background with the gray. I've done a little bit of reading about gray that I wanted to share with you throughout the hour and um, and why it's such a good uh, color. color. Do you know you can make gray by mixing complementary colors together? So literally, and you can and there are a myriad of shades of gray, thus the book, right? Uh, but if you mix red and green, which are complementary colors together, you can get a gray. If you mix yellow and purple together, you get gray. And if you mix orange and blue together, you will get gray. If you, or when you look at color theory, you'll always see gray is associated with mood, sometimes melancholy mood. Um, or neutral, or then on the, it can also be interpreted as sophisticated, or sleek, or classic, and depending on what you pair it with and what you do with it, it can be used in all those cases. In all of the cases, what, what I keep coming back to with gray is, it gives, when I'm working with other color, it seems to give my eye a place to rest. And I do like to use gray. I don't like to ever use black because that's just too, for me, that's just too stark in anything I'm doing. Where I'm, is that true? Unless I like to use black and white, I definitely do that. So I guess I take that back. But I don't, as a rule, like to use black unless I guess I'm using it as a design part. Anyway, I'm in over my head. So that's what I know about gray. You can see I'm putting together another one of my nine patches right here. I'm webbing it together. And I just wanted to share with you what I had read about around gray. And I'm liking this gray. Now, we had some excellent suggestions from folks last week on this block. And I pulled them up and I wanted to share them right away before we get any further. 
They're really smart, which I love. That's what I love about all of us getting together is that there are so many tips that it just is so helpful to share them with each other. That's going to be cool. I like that. There's contrast there. So, one of the biggest tips came from Gypsy's mom. And she sent a couple. So Diane sent this. First she said, make sure not to stretch your fabric when pressing or sewing because all of these are on the bias. Oop. You hear that? That's a dog. I think Bob's coming home, so we should be okay. So that's a really good tip. It's very easy to want to stretch these out of shape when you are, when I am pressing them. So that was a really good tip. There was, I think it was Eileen said, a way to prevent that stretching is to use starch, either some vodka starch or some best press. Of course, I don't have either here, and um, so I'm just trying to be very careful and just not distort the fabric. So that was tip number one. Then Diane wrote back again with another idea that was like, duh. Sorry about that dog. She said, when I'm sewing, when we're sewing these two blocks together, you know, that's the first step of this disappearing pinwheel patch, which, by the way, I should remind everyone, this is a video. It's a 9 to 10 minute video that Jenny Doan has recorded that gives you the steps for doing this. So go watch that video. I've put the link on Facebook and in various places. But anyway, her first step is to literally put two of these 10 inch squares together, right sides facing, and then literally sew a quarter of an inch all the way around. Well, last time I went down a quarter of an, to a quarter of an inch of the end and then I fussy went across. There's no need to do that. I can just go all the way end to end a quarter of an inch, turn it end to end, end to end. And that will save me a lot of time and probably get a much truer 90 degree angle rather than me fussy turning 90 degrees. So I'll show you what I mean by that. And that actually will allow us to do some flag sewing on those. So we'll do that a little bit later. So thank you for that tip. She says it better even. She said, uh, I noticed you were sewing the 10 inch squares together together when you when I was doing that I was stopping a quarter of inch at the end I sew right off the end and spin the block around and do the next side either way is okay because it's going to get cut but I don't like fretting about a stopping point unless it's vital ie bindings so another great point Diane and so well said um, oh and it was you who suggested best press and the vodka mix to help stabilize the biases so thanks for sending that in Let's see. We also have some new folks who have joined us. So welcome to Teresa and Ross and James. Welcome, everyone. So why don't I just get back, and we have more, but why don't I just keep sewing? If anyone is out there and you feel like checking in, Send me an email or text or post something on the Facebook or the Google pages. My email, it's still kind of a convoluted one, it's L my, for my first name, Lynn. And then my last name, Marquedant, at gmail.com. So it's L M A R Q U E D as in David A N T at gmail.com. And I'd love to hear what you're working on. So you may be wondering why I'm going to La Jolla. I'm wondering. No, I'm kidding. I'm not wondering why. I it, It's a last-minute request to go out there to a, a leadership forum. Why, hello, Allie. The Governing Institute of America has a top 25 women in government summit. So they're going to be talking about what they're doing in their respective jurisdictions. And I will be there representing our company and asking them questions about how technology is helping them 
and what we can do to help them with that technology. So it'll be good. Unfortunately, it's in it's all the way across the country. You know, why couldn't they be summiting in Boston sometime? <laughs> so tomorrow at 2:15 a.m., the shuttle comes and picks me up, and Bob asked me why I wasn't driving in myself into the airport, and I told him because. The answer was pretty simple, is I want to just try and roll out of bed and roll into the shared van, and who else is going to be with me at 2.15? So I hope I have a whole, a whole seat. Believe me, this is when you know travel is not glamorous, and I hope to be able to sleep on that seat all the way into Logan, and then roll onto a 5 a.m. plane. So the good news is that if this works out right, which half the time it does, I should be able to see the Pacific Ocean for a little while because it's right on the water, I guess, where we're staying. I know. It's not too hard. So that's where I'll be. But again, I think I'm going out to dinner tomorrow night with a few of them so I couldn't do Firecast. So we're doing it today. Look at that. That's going to be a fun one. So let me press it. I also moved the angle like last week. I moved the angle out a little bit. And you can see I'm, I'm back home. I left mom on Monday, came back here, had to work in the office, and um, need to catch up with her today. She had a busy day. She went off island, but I think things are going well. Bob set up the lights here in the studio again. And I watched him do it this time so that when I take them on the road, I don't have to do it. And you can see, because of all this traveling and moving around, I've not gotten my hair cut. So I put a bar right in it because I left my hair dryer down at the vineyard. So <laughs> with any luck, when I get to California, the hotel will have a hair dryer. And who knows, maybe I'll bring one of my many pairs of scissors and try and give myself a haircut. I'm kidding. I won't. All right. I like that a lot. Let's pin this one right up. Let's put this right here. I can't wait to see everyone's disappearing pinwheel. Deb Linehan, if you're out there, it's so exciting to hear that you are making this particular quilt. I'm psyched to see it. I also wanted to tell you that Carol, I went and visited Carol in the hospital. She had her appendix out two days ago. And I told her you were on Fibercast last week. It's for everyone else out there. Carol is my sister-in-law, Deb is my cousin-in-law, and they are your first cousins, right? So Deb and Carol, hello. And hopefully, maybe you can both see this, although Carol, I believe, is going to be in the hospital until Monday. So I clearly can't catch a break lately, but Carol had good, is, has good care and good doctors. And her husband and son are taking good care of her, so. But Carol, anyway, your cousin Deb is making the disappearing pinwheel patch. Whenever I can, I'm still trying to wed these together. For some reason, there was a random comment on one of our past videos just five minutes ago. One of the ones where I had Bonnie Hunter's Grand Illusion quilt hanging up behind me, her mystery quilt. And honestly, someone out there said, 
I'm surprised you didn't give Bonnie Hunter credit for that quilt. Really, people? Kind of can't have it two ways. Can't have it both ways. You can't share things. And then do a take back. Okay. There we go. Put that over there. Use that. That. Pretty, pretty. So what has everyone else been working on this weekend? I mean this week. See how I, I just web it together. I love webbing it. I have to remember to download some podcasts to my iPad before I leave tomorrow. I'm all packed. My suitcase is ready to go. Oh, and I was so glad to have a outfit at the dry cleaner that I put there brought in before I left for the vineyard this last time. So that's all set. I went and picked it up, put it right in the suitcase, We're ready to go. After I finish these, this pinwheel, I will check the email because there were several other of you that wrote in that I wanted to read. It's just so fun to hear from everyone. Deb C, who's out there, what a nice, nice note you left me. And Colleen, I hope everything's going okay. And Maggie, this is a pretty one. Isn't that a pretty? Fabric. This is the one that looks like um, William Morris. So speaking of clay, or I mean gray, I wanted to, to share what I remember reading about Sculpey's gray clay. They said that they colored it gray because when you photograph it, you get very good detail. Which reminds me, I have a ball jointed doll in process that I wanted to show everyone the progress so far. So after I'm finished with this, I made it out of that gray sculpy clay. After I do this one seam, I'll show you.
ran out of bobbin thread. Oh no, I ran out of top thread. Oh, so what I'm doing here is I literally went and I found all of these bobbins that are kind of running out. So I'm, or this one's definitely running out. The other two have a little more. So clearly I'm not using my Aurifil. And I will just, I love it when I finish those. I'm just trying to be frugal or use up what we've got. We're all just so lucky, fortunate. Okay. sure see that seam with the darkness, but there's another one. All right, so let's put that there. Ball jointed doll. Speaking of gray, Sculpey has their super Sculpey clay that's gray, and you may remember a couple of weeks ago I started to make the pieces of a ball jointed doll. She's not perfect. I think I'm ultimately going to have to make her stand rather than having her sit because I didn't figure out she doesn't have much of a backbone <laughs> with the current the way she's currently made. So I'm gonna figure out how to make her stand up. And I threaded her with this elastic. And it has two round pieces of elastic, two loops, one going across the arms and then one going from head into each of the feet. Then, so I'll figure out how to stand her up. And then what I have to do is I literally have made her feet and her hands and I need to create little S hooks in them that will then hook on to each, I know you can't really see it, but there's one hand, and I have to make sure to put the thumb up, and here's the other hand, so let's see. <laughs> and then her feet, she has a right foot and a left foot. And we'll put that on and we'll have little balls there for the joints. And like I say, we'll put the S hook and that will hook into the elastic. And then we'll dress her up and stand her up. Oh, and she has a little head that we have to put an S hook on. So that goes on top. And then we put her wig on. So I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that we're making progress. And I think she'll be about... 12 or 13 inches when all is said and done. Yeah, she'll be about, no, the sculpture total will be a good 13 inches once she's on a pedestal. And even though her legs look really skinny, once we dress her up, they won't look so bad. I think overall her proportions are pretty good. But we'll see. So. That is the gray doll. Let's do a little uh, speed sewing. Or I'm literally, now I think what I'm going to do is I have my two sets of 10 inch squares. My gray and my free spirit Amy Butler pattern called Violet. That's what this layer cake is. And I think I'm just gonna join two of them together and start sewing quarter inch seams. Yep. Just have a little blip. Little bird's nest. 
which is bound to happen when you're, that's the, the unfortunate part about using up the ends of spools. I find it goofs up my beginning and ending tension a little bit, and I get these birds' nests. You guys, I'm sure you do too. But once I get going, it'll be fine. I'll just go until I run out of thread. And this way we can look at the different fabrics. So that's going to be a pretty one. Although from a distance, I bet it doesn't stand out much from the gray. This way I'm not even going to have to pin, pin these together. Ooh, this is a pretty one. That almost looks like Lily Pulitzer. Here's another one in a different color wave. Woohoo! I'll get cut up. Maybe I'll do one more. There's a pretty one too. Blue. these, this flag apart. And then feed it in again. So much easier, Diane. Thank you. is piecing on a grand scale, 10 inch blocks. Aha! Look at that! Look at what we finished! Done. Now let's go to this baby blue one that was probably chewed by Allie, the black lab, when she was a puppy 12 years ago. Time to use this one up. And it still feels strong, but I think it might break periodically because where she chewed, there might have little breaks in the thread, but it feels like it's in good shape. There's no rot. Okay. Keep, keep going around in a circle. around here. I threw out a chair today. It was another one that we have had since before we had this puppy. So it's probably 14 years old because I think Bob came home with, I forget, no, maybe he came home one day with furniture for the living room. The, um, tables, the wood furniture, 
And then he and I went and we picked out a sofa and a chair. And this chair that we picked out, I just threw out the window today. I was, I was very, it sounds much more dramatic than it really was. We have a, in this room, there is over there a little porch and there is a sliding glass door. And we're on the second floor and it was just easier, this was a big overstuffed chair, it was just easier to take the legs off, take the, the cushion out and just throw the, I saved the legs because I think they're going to be good, see here's when you know you have a problem. I think they're going to be good seats for dolls. And I'll show you that sometime. But I threw out the cushion out the chair window, and then I was able to get the door shimmy, shimmy the um, the chair out the door, and threw it over the railing onto the ground outside. And now it is over in the side yard. It's going to get wet. But it's there with some other junk that has to go to the dump. And it fell apart. Oh, and I found a knitting needle in it. A number five short knitting needle that I loved. Not a bake light, but an old fashioned one, like a Susan Bates one that's the metal. Oh, there's someone crying. I will call them back. It's a 202 exchange, and it's a stranger in Washington, D.C. Once I finish these five, I will, ooh, that one's done. I'll go read some more mail from last week after we turn Fibercast off. KB, if you're out there, your one and a half inch squares, your swaps looked good. As did your trip out to the land jam in Pennsylvania. For everyone else here, my sister and her husband went camping in Pennsylvania, as I'm sure a lot of you on, on here did. She went camping and her husband is plays in a band and they played out they make them their selves. They make a little stage, and they play. And it looked beautiful. Weather looked good. Probably pretty hot. All righty. So there are five more, all sewn together. I'm going to go over to the iron right over here. So follow me. If you can see this, I hope you can. I mixed all of my junk. So I'm just going to try to remember not to stretch things. Do a lot of pressing up and down. probably not do a whole lot of pressing, a heavy press, until the whole quilt top is done. If even then. This is something new. Yay. Two. Three. Do this one. 
and then we'll cut ourselves some blocks. All right, so there's one, two, three, ready to go. We'll put these away. Over there. I'm going to give all four of these a quick little douse. Set the scene there. Five more there. So let's see if right here. I'm gonna stand up for a second. Hopefully this will work. Anyone doing any of the other mysteries out there? Like from um, oh, Love Bug Studios? Any of the Downton Abbey? Okay, so as a reminder, measure the whole size of this block and then put cut it into three three equal pieces. So you have nine pieces, nine equal size pieces. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and a half. Okay, so yep. So it's like two and a sixteenth on each side of my center seam. See that? So then we literally, this is the fun part, we turn it into the square. Now, that was what someone else wrote. Remember last week we were talking, um, Maureen in Pennsylvania saw in the Block magazine that you could also do the churn dash? design with this? Well, there are a couple of others, too. Let me find who wrote that. Okay, so in addition to churn dash, you can also rearrange this to be called Whirly Gig, or there's another one, Friendship Star with Illinois Road, and this one. So there are a lot of things you can do with this, I think, and I did play with it before I turned the fiber cast on. I did play with doing another, like the churn dash. And then I decided, nope, stick with what you started. Do the whole thing. That's what you're making. And then I might go and try what someone else suggested. And I'll try to find out who. By the way, Ella, thank you for the tips about what other squares we can make. Come on, baby. Hi, Karen Doe. And Deb C and Jan T and Sandy and Laura, hi. So I'm trying to find out. Here we go. Snowball in the corners. So this is also from Ella Previtt. She said you could maybe do snowball in the corners of the gray using a different color. She saw Jenny do it once in her quilts and it looked great. It made a new block. I think that's a great idea. So remember I was saying that with this particular way I'm doing it, I'm ending up with four grays, and I know it's hard to see here, but 
that I'm sewing all together and that just seems like a waste. I'm thinking maybe we could do a snowball, do something there in another color. And won't it be fun to play with what color? It could be a lighter gray. It could be a bright red. It could be a bright turquoise blue. I think what I'm going to do is put them all together and then literally play with little blocks that I can throw up on it. And maybe we can vote or something. But I think that's what this is ultimately going to need to make things pop. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe I need to learn to just go with a little less contrast because it is really interesting. Even as I'm looking at the camera, looking behind me, it's, it is interesting to see how the different uh, materials work with the gray. Anyhow, thank you for your letters. Those were a few more. It's really great. Do you believe we've been doing Fibercast for a year and a half now? I, I, I don't know where the time goes. The reason that came up, I was looking for work. I was looking for a template today. And I looked back, and I found one in September, and I thought, that's just two months from now. Where is this year going? Oops. And then I also was putting away some of my quilts. <clears throat> that um, TV cabinet I mentioned that Bob brought home 14 years ago, we no longer have a big fat TV to put in it because we have one of the flat screens. So now it is in our spare bedroom. We have a two bedroom house. It's in our spare bedroom and I use it to store all my quilts in. So I literally put all the quilts in there. I refolded them. And where was I going with that thought? I guess, oh, I know what I was thinking. I was looking and thinking last year I was more prolific with the quilts and I and it's because I got into the dolls, right, and, <clears throat> and other things, which is all good. Or at least I think it is. It's kept me interested. What do you all do to keep interested in your, your fun time? You have to mix it up, I think. Certainly, I have to tell you that this, this summer, of course, this spring and summer, none of us around here have done much gardening, much formal gardening. But you know, when you do past years and you do perennials, they're like, perennials are like a bank account. Once you put it in, every year it gives back to you, you know, the little interest. I am so enjoying those flowers when they're blooming. Looking around the lilies right now, the blue globe thistle like I never thought I'd ever have in my life, like it's up this tall. Um, I have a little old-fashioned pink rose bush that I got up at the church yard sale from Betty Wyckoff here in Hopkinton. She pulled it up from her yard up on Main Street heading toward Milford. And she said, this rose, it was a little, one little twig. She said, it just, it loves living around here. And it does. And it's, it's not really an old fashioned. It's, it's better than that. It's got multiple, it's like a double or a triple, you know, but it's little and it just kind of spreads and it sprawls along the ground and I'm just loving looking at that. So hopefully your gardens are giving you pleasure or you're thinking about them or even just when you drive along and you see other people's gardens, like the daisies are starting to come out big time, the, the fancy ones, the Montauk, well no, not the Montauk, Shasta. <clears throat> a 
And on the vegetable garden, Bridget, my neighbor, has been just doing... She has a full-time job, as do we all. But she also, this year, has been taking care of the garden, the vegetable garden. And unfortunately, we had a lot of lettuce that's now all bolted. So we've got to pull that out. But the kale... We all, I, we have two types of kale. <coughs> Excuse me. They're definitely all of them are going on two and a half feet tall from here, so maybe two feet tall. One of them has has regular smaller leaves, but it's getting mature. You know, the leaves are mature and it's stockier and it's thicker, and it'll take a long time to cook down. But Bob eats it raw. The other kale, literally, each leaf is the size of this block. I've never seen kale this big. And I thought it was going to be redder, but it's not a, it's just this huge leaf, the size of rhubarb leaves almost for kale. So that's fun. Let's see. So let's iron this. I'm going over here. And again, I'm going to try not to stretch things. And I'm not going to worry too much about which way the seams go. Because, as you know, I never seem to. It's hard not to pull the seams. Let's say. <coughs> Excuse me. Trim this up. All right, there is another one. Let's put this. Oh, that's falling down, isn't it? No. Oh. Hmm. So we've used three of those, the same design. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve and a half inches. So each one of these has to be about four and an eighth. So I need to cut about two and a sixteenth from the middle seam. Corners in. You see that? All right. <coughs> Here we go. Oh, I know what else I wanted to show you. Sandra Cuban's masterpiece. Sandra, do you ever sleep? You are amazing, the things you do. And much of it for charity, I might add. Or for others. In hot Mississippi, oh, I bet it is hot down there, Sandra.
Okay, so it's webbed together. Could be an interesting one. Doesn't that look like the 70s? Or 60s even? Oh, and another thing up in our garden are the beans, green beans. I have to get up there and pick some, but you know what? Now as I say that, it's dark out, and I'm not going to get up there until probably Sunday now. I picked a huge bag. So we've been eating those every night, and I fully intended to go pick some and make pickle them. Or make a three bean salad. I think I can make them with just one color bean. They're all green, so there aren't any wax, yellow, or red, or any of that. But couldn't I just make that with maybe throwing some chickpeas? Or even some red kidney beans? Here to the iron. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Okay. Still trying not to distort it. Press up and down rather than stretching it. Oh, I like this one too. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Cut off the ends. I know this isn't very exciting, but hopefully you are all doing something with me. So we're just keeping each other company, right? I'm going to put that up here. That right there. So we're growing. Let's see. How many do we have now? Can you see that one? Yeah. Okay, there's one out of your view that you can't see, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and that one's 11. So we have 11 so far. Let's see. Maybe I'll do this one last one tonight. So that'll be 12. And I think that'll be good. We're cruising. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and a half. Okay. That's good. And here we go. Look at that. There. Turn these corners in. I'm trying to think what other news I have before we all go off. Um, ooh, that's pretty. Really isn't much. Oops, 
throwing this away. I hope everyone is having good summertime food like well, from the garden we talked about, watermelon, peaches, hopefully you're enjoying cherries, and then I've just rediscovered iced coffee. I put it in a container that, basically a, um, a, a mug that's insulated and put a lot of ice there. Mom just turned me on to that again. And ooh, that's good, but I have to switch to something not caffeinated in the afternoon. But that's really good. Sweet tea, lemonade. In fact, I was thinking when I get back from my trip to California, I might get into the habit of putting some iced tea or crystal light maybe, make it up in the fridge so I can just go in and get that. Or even just a little flavored water. I just don't tend to like just water. Anywho, and of course ice cream. I hope you're making a little time and room for treats this summer. On other news, exciting news, oops, look at this. I almost did that wrong. Check this out. That one's wrong. So let me just rip that right out. Phew! Knowing my luck, there are probably some other ones wrong behind me. I hope not. Got too busy talking about food. Uh. Okay, turn that around. Take off the extra here. Do one last seam. <clears throat> oh, what I was going to say <laughs> before I discovered my mistake here is we have just Dave. Dave, my brother-in-law, Bob's brother, and his wife have just gotten tickets for another West Virginia football game. Remember last year we went out for that? We're going to do it again in October. And to tell you the truth, I have no idea who they're playing. I just found out we're in the gold section. And we were told that meant that we're supposed to work, because West Virginia is gold and blue, right? And I think that means we're supposed to wear gold. But the comment in the email was gold, meaning gold jerseys and things you wear, not jewelry. <laughs> so that is going to be fun to look forward to. Oh. 
Again, I'm just pressing down. Oh, this is a pretty one. I knew I'd like this one. Isn't that pretty? So let's put that one up here. And then I'm going to move another one down. And then I think we're going to have to sign off. Okay, let's put that one there. Hang on. Let's put this one here. Can you see this? And I'll get out of the way. And there we have it. Three, six, nine, twelve of our disappearing pinwheel patch so far. I hope that you have had fun. I know I have. Love it when we get together. I get twice as much done as I ever would on my own. Thank you for keeping me company. Thanks for joining. And we will be together again a week from Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So have a great week, everyone. Keep creating. See you soon.